Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wee Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, the last time we left off, we had just woken up, we got gagged, and I guess beat up a little bit by a big, uh, big black wolf. And now this, uh, this, you know, lighter furred gray wolf comes in, and he's uh, he's a lot nicer to us than the other guy. So, uh, I'm, I'm guessing he's one of the heroes of the story. So. Let's jump right back into it and see where this leads to. Uh, will we get destroyed or will we survive? Who knows? Probably, probably the latter. <laughs> Wouldn't be much of a visual novel if we all died at the beginning. Anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Start my little timer. Okay. All right. Alarm chain has been set. <clears throat> Let's go back a little bit. The wolves briefly exchanged gazes, looking back at me with the same, the same surprise in their eyes. What? It speaks. It might be just a few words. The gray wolf shakes his head, looking at me for confirmation. Right? I don't respond. My thoughts are spinning in complete confusion, and the gray wolf simply points to my legs. <clears throat> Hold on. Let's get you untied, okay? I wouldn't do that. I ignore the brute and hastily nod to the gray wolf, desperately wanting to get out of this awkward position. I need him to trust us. How can he do that when he's tied up like a prisoner? He, he works his fingers around the knot. Oh. Well then. <laughs> Cursing under his breath. <laughs> I couldn't resist! Come on! Fuck, did you have to make it this tight? The other wolf only shrugs. I can't see much, but I feel the but I feel the stinging of bruised skin as the rope finally loosens up. There we go. My legs stretch out almost on their own accord, the tension in my knees finally letting up. I sigh in relief. I didn't think it was possible to feel so good just stretching out like this. Right. I need to turn you on your back. He circles the air with his finger, letting me know that what he intends to do. I just nod. Please don't do anything. Stupid. What can I possibly do with two monsters hulking over me? I allow myself to be rolled over and feel as the gray wolf and I feel as the gray wolf walks onto the bed and mounts my back. Huh. His voice is tinged with embarrassment as I grunt under his weight. Sorry, just a precaution. He squats on my butt, his muscular legs either side of my torso, squeezing slightly to hold me fast. I guess he does not trust me to stay still. It takes him a while to undo the knot, but when, they, when he's finally done, I feel the blood rush to my hands. I try to push myself up to force some life into my numb limbs, but I feel a giant paw pressing against my naked back with leathery pads. Don't make me regret this. He whispers the words into my ear, and his cautious tone completely throws me off. I'm not the dangerous one here! Not wanting to startle him, I stay still until he gets off me, turning back to face him only when I feel his weight disappear. His paw slides off my back, but he keeps hovering above me, his form dwarfing mine. I'm calm enough to finally have a proper look at him. His fur is gray, but with a slight brown tint to it. I rub my stinging wrists, tracing the red marks where the ropes held me. I do that more out of contemplation rather than actual pain. Everything is so confusing and absurd, yet feels so real. You okay? Am I? I adjust myself in bed, trying to raise slight trying to rise slightly so that the wolf so that the wolf man doesn't hover above me in such an awkward fashion. His eyes are kind and showing a caring person behind the mask of a wild beast, a stark contrast to his muscular and burly build. Not to mention his black companion. I am I am sitting in this strange room surrounded by talking wolves. If this is not a dream, then I must be insane. Seriously? You did a number on the poor kid. The gray wolf eyes out my neck, causing me to immediately touch it. I wince in pain, drawing air through my teeth. My throat still hurts, and he clearly doesn't want to be touched. Gaining his trust will take a fucking miracle now. He throws an angry stare to the black male, who simply raises a brow. His trust? What about us? He could be dangerous. Don't be ridiculous. He's tiny and obviously frightened. How dangerous could he possibly be? 
I'm not sure I'm frightened anymore. My emotions are running riot, and I have no idea what I actually feel now. I just sit there, unsure what to do. The Grey Wolf's demeanor is quite disarming. His kind eyes and soothing voice allow me to calm the torrent in my head ever so slightly. Between him and the Black Brute, he genuinely doesn't seem to wish me harm. I resume rubbing my wrists, and the Grey Wolf notices that. His big paw reaching out to them. Let's save it right here. Alright. As he's about to touch me, I clasp my paw with both hands and bring it close to my face so that I can have a better look. It is soft to the touch, the fur kempt and having a vague scent of the forest. I turn the paw to reveal its underside, with six distinct leathery pads. They are dark brown and surprisingly supple, more akin to skin than what I initially thought. I trace my finger from his palm up to the dull tip of his middle claw. This is so surreal. Before I let go of his paw, I ruffle the fur around his wrist, trying to find where there might be some sort of partition in the costume. I find nothing, gazing at the muzzle of the wolf, dumbfounded. Why would I even think it's a costume? I can't help myself but reach out and touch his chest. Despite the fur, I can clearly see defined muscles. I carefully brush away around a necklace. Its stone is white, but otherwise it looks similar to the one of the black wolf wears. I sink my fingers into the fur and am immediately met with contrasting sensations. The softness of the coat and the rock-hard pecks beneath it. His chest expands heavily with each breath while I move my hand from one breast to another, completely mesmerized. He's so warm. I can't believe my senses. This can't possibly be real. Ahem. <clears throat> he clears his throat, looking as confused as I am. My eyes and hands drift to his snout, but I stop short from touching him. He looks at me with slight surprise, but as he notices my hesitation, he pushes his muzzle into my open palm. His nose is wet and warm, like I'd expect a wolf's nose to be. What are you doing? Don't let... I want him to feel at ease. The Grey Wolf extends his paw towards his companion in a calming manner, letting him know to leave me be. I am completely lost in my own thoughts as my hand wanders the length of his muzzle, all the way to his cheeks. I groom his side fluff, realizing how soft and pleasant the grey fur is. As I caress his face, he rests his head on into my hands, looking almost cute and innocent. I hear soft thumping of his tail against the bed. He's enjoying my attention, but I'm not really petting him. I'm simply trying to convince myself that he is not an illusion. Finally, I venture lower to his mouth, fueled by this exploring frenzy. Have you ever just wanted to touch someone's face, like, really, really close? <laughs> I almost touch his lips when I hear a soft growl from the black wolf. Careful now, he used to chew on his toys. I blink, pulling my hand back. What am I doing? I was about to foolishly stick my fingers into a wolf's maw. I grimace in discomfort, but the gray male simply smiles at me. Any thought of harm quickly disappears from my mind, but another troubling realization takes its place. He's real. You're... a wolf. I try to keep a straight face as, those, as I say those ridiculous words. Yes, and you're a human. He touches my shoulder with his paw, his words still annoyingly slow and steady. I finally realize what it is that bothers me about it. He talks to me as if I were either a stupid or a child. And since I'm not a child... Feeling patronized, I finally snap out of the stupor and brush his paw away. Where the hell am I? Who are you people? The two wolves exchange confused looks, this time both their expressions turning. That's more than just a few words. The brute is clearly upset that I can speak, and it only fuels my frustration. Let me save it right here, guys. Can you understand us? Yes, of course I can. What is this place? This is my home. Why am I here? Did you kidnap me? What? No, I found you. How did it learn our language? There's not a hint of accent. It's as if it was born and raised here. The Black Wolf's inquisition into my linguistic skills finally pisses me off. What are you talking about? I'm not speaking your language. You're speaking mine. You were raised speaking Wolven? Yeah, right. Someone shaved his ugliest pup and abandoned it in the woods. Speak Wolven? As in what? Growling and howling? I'm so confused. I cannot hear this Wolven language they insist I'm using. I don't know what you two are talking about, but this is my language. Always has been. You're either a spy or a fucking lunatic. I'm neither, you dumb beast. 
I spit it out. I spit out in anger, causing the black wolf to snarl viciously, his fur bristling. I quickly regret doing that, as I can see the black monster tense up, ready to give me another thrashing. Shut up, both of you! The gray wolf looks back to me with slight annoyance. I thought you said you could understand us. So which part of being killed, if discovered, didn't you get? He gives me a stern look and I cool down a bit. Talking back to either of them is not the best idea. We need to keep quiet. Why? What's going on? You shouldn't be here. I'll explain everything, but for the time being, please, trust me. That feels like a stretch. However, I don't seem to have any other options. Okay, fine. I can see through a sigh. But I don't understand anything that's going on here. How are you speaking our language? This language is what I know, what I've always known. You heard you speak something else, though. I don't know what you said, but it wasn't woven. What? No, that's not right. I don't remember speaking or thinking in either language. I really need you to help me out here. The Grey Wolf looks at me, worried, hastily sitting down on the bed and reaching for my hand. I flinch, startled by the beast's movements in proximity, managing, managing to retreat my hand before the paw lands on it. I cradle it near my chest, making the wolf aware I'm not okay with him touching me. I may be a little hypocritical, considering I took full liberty in touching him, but that thought quickly disappears with another bizarre question. Do you speak Tigarian, perhaps? Tigarian? I scoff, almost mocking the gray wolf. As in... Tigers? You're saying there's talking tigers out there. The wolf's eyes wander off in annoyance, as if he wants me to just make... As if he wants me to just make my jaded point already. What else? Elephants? Ooh, I bet their language is what? Elephantine? I finally lose it and I'm unable to contain a chuckle. The human is fluent in our language and even cracks jokes. This whole mess just went from bad to worse. What are we going to do now? I don't know. My thoughts begin to wander off to the world outside of this room. Where the hell am I? That's exactly my point. You never think these things through. Your father will... He doesn't have to know. Have you also gone mad? Is that thing contagious? At least for now, let's keep my father out of it. I need to find a way to present this in the least controversial way. How do you want to do that? Roll the human in honey and cover him with fur? What are they even talking about? Obviously not. Save it right here. <sighs> No. That's a relief because it's not crazier than smuggling the human here in the first place. I don't know why I allowed you to rope me into this. I just look between the two wolves, arguing, still none the wiser. Can someone please explain to me what's going on? I find myself barking out in annoyance. The gray wolf looks at me, surprised, and then sighs. I guess this is where we introduce ourselves. He straightens up, pumping up his chest. It's clear he's trying to be presentable, as if it'll make as if it'll make any difference to me. Ugh, don't My name is Rannick. He speaks slowly, deepening his voice like some guys do when they try to impress. And this is vulgar. He notices my reluctant gaze towards the other wolf and laughs awkwardly, the self important image dissipating almost instantly. Don't mind him. Despite his demeanor, he's a good friend. A friend? He almost killed me! I shout out, glaring at the black male with hatred in my eyes. I can still see him hovering above me, choking me out until choking me until I pass out. Rennick frantically shushes me, pushing his finger against his lips. If I wanted you dead, do you think you'd still be here bitching about it, little piggy? A soft growl follows the wolf's words, but he cuts it off as Rennick gives him a stern look. What he did was a bit harsh. But in truth, he saved your life. What are you talking about? He nearly choked the life out of me. If anyone would find you here, you would be killed. His voice tries to convey the gravity of the situation, but I'm at a loss. Ugh, pardon me, guys. You keep saying that, but you don't explain why. We don't allow... A Ooh! Oh. Okay, I was thinking other kin as in people who are reincarnated. Not other kin, as in other species. Okay, alright, I understand that now. Okay. 
We don't allow other kin into our forest. Trespassing is forbidden and punishable by death. What the hell are other kin? You for one, little piggy. It is a term for any intelligent species other than your own. You're another kin to us, just as we are other kin to you. I shake my head slightly, trying to comprehend what he's saying. Hold on, you really mean that there are more talking beasts out there? Either it's kidding, or there's something wrong with it. You... don't remember? The Grey Wolf looks at me pleadingly, as if asking to end whatever game I'm playing. I think I would remember living in a world inhabited by talking animals. Renek's brow narrows, showing he has taken offense at my comment. We're as much talking animals as you are a talking chimp. I'd say it looks more like a talking piece of would-be ham. Now I'm the one offended. Stop calling me it! I have a name! Well, you didn't give it to us. No, don't ask its name! Renek huffs with a cheeky smile, allowing one fang to perk out. He's making a good point, and I decide to ignore the Black Wolf's protests. It's... Wait, what is my name? Ah, oh, hell, come on now! Ah! This is gonna trip me up. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, give me a... Guys, what can the name be? Give me a name. Uh... No. No, no, no. <laughs> I dropped too much attention. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Um... Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe I can change this later. Orion. Orion, that's a good... Okay, Orion, that's a good name. And just like that, it rolls off my tongue. Orion. <clears throat> Sorry. Orion. It's strange to hear it out loud, but it feels right. No, for fuck's sake! Orion. Good. We're getting somewhere. The Grey Wolf smiles, ruffling my hair. I consider swatting his paw away, but his kind expression convinces me to simply ignore, ignore his forwardness. What we're getting in, what we're getting in is some very deep shit. I flinch, seeing the black wolf look at me with his cold eyes. We need to kill it. I freeze, seeing that the wolf is not joking. What? Rennick jumps up to his feet, shielding me with his body, his reaction pushing me further into paralysis. We need to get rid of this freak before anyone finds out. Sheltering any other kin is one thing, but having it speak our language is deadly serious. We need to kill it. We are not doing that! Rannick raises his voice, causing me to wince. Their bodies tense up, and I can see their every muscle straining. Rannick, be reasonable! There's no way you can spin this! We can be banished! I don't care! My heart skips a beat as I hear Rannick issue a powerful snarl. I cannot see his expression, but I'm sure it mirrors that of the black male, who bears his fangs in a vicious, almost feral way. Both wolves hold their paws close to their chest, with fingers feathered out in anticipation. I cannot stand by while you're making the biggest mistake of your life. This is not a mistake. This is my destiny, Varissa. <laughs> Without a warning, Volgar pushes my defender and they claw a few steps away from the bed, heads butting and paws interlocking. Varissa huffs incense and eats hallucinogenic mushrooms. She's not speaking with our ancestors. You know that. I cannot avert my gaze from this spectacle, partially because I'm frozen, but also because my life depends on the result. I have to expect them to thrash about, biting each other, but instead they stay locked like this. What I know is that Mother Moon guided me to this human, just like Varissa said she would. She said you would find your purpose, that the ceremony is just a tradition. You are meant to reflect on life by observing falling leaves or a sunset, not to break our sacred laws for a fucking human. I hear their strained puffs as they wrestle with each other in place. Despite how vicious they sound, growling and snarling, I can see they're not really fighting, but rather trying to overpower one another. The human spoke my name. Rannick struggles the words through a grunt as Volger twists his paws back, forcing the gray wolf to one knee. He is losing. Has it occurred to you that since the human speaks our language, he might have simply read it? What is he even talking about? Where would I have read Rannick's name? I've never heard it before in my life. 
Vol, you are my moon brother. I don't want to fight you. That is exactly why I have to fight you. You're about to fuck up our entire lives. Vulgar's gaze drifts towards me, his red eyes piercing right through my flesh. He knows he will soon have his way. The labored snarls and growls begin to send me over the edge, and I know that the panic attack is fast approaching. I close my eyes, huddling myself and slowly rocking back and forth like a traumatized child. I don't think anymore. I just want it all to stop. Stop it, please! Everything goes silent as I cry out through tears. Just stop! Orion! The mattress jumps up as the wolf's weight lands on it. I open my eyes to see the gray wolf splayed out in front of me. Vulgar must have used my cry as a distraction to throw Rannick back. I glare at the brute approaching us, and without even thinking, I shield Rannick with my own body. Please, don't fight over me! I don't understand what I've done wrong! Oh, oh lord. What a tense episode. Oh, man. Oh, lord. Gotta catch my breath. Wow, okay. All right. I see the author of this is getting my is definitely giving my voice a workout. Not gonna complain. I like I like the uh, ooh the fast paced nature of this. This is pretty awesome. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. That has been another episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.